Thank you all for joining us uh, for today's webinar. My name is Rob Monroe. I'm currently serving as the Chief Medical Officer at Advanced Cell Diagnostics. I'm also a board certified pathologist trained in anatomic and clinical pathology as well as cytopathology. Uh, so I'm very familiar in uh, reviewing <clears throat> various types of uh, studies, including RNA-ish, immunohistochemistry, fish, and other assays. Uh, among other responsibilities here at ACD, I work closely with the research and development, pharma assay services, and in vitro diagnostics groups on assay development and scoring of samples that have been stained with RNA scope. In today's webinar, uh, I'm going to focus on RNA scope data interpretation. Uh, the agenda for today's webinar is shown here. Uh, my plan is to briefly go over the RNA scope technology and give a few examples of RNA scope applications uh, before getting into the nuts and bolts uh, of the webinar and discussing RNA scope staining and scoring, uh, which will include comparison with immunohistochemistry, uh, analysis, uh, and interpretation of signals, reviewing definitions. Uh, and then uh, briefly touching on the sensitivity and limited detection of the RNA scope assay. Uh, then I'll plan on going over manual scoring systems uh, and finish up this section uh, with a brief discussion of image analysis and quantitative scoring. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at uh, quality control of RNA scope results. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a brief question and answer session. Uh, so with that, let's begin by going over the RNA scope technology. So as many of you know, uh, the techniques of immunohistochemistry and fluorescence in situ hybridization have been around for uh, a number of decades. Detection of protein with immunohistochemistry uh, is very well established and routinely used in clinical practice and research, as is FISH uh, for DNA detection. And while uh, quantitative reverse transcription PCR is commonly used for RNA detection and quantitation, uh, before the commercial launch of RNA scope in 2010, shown here in the middle panel, there was no robust or sensitive method for target RNA detection within intact cells. Uh, with that, let's move on to uh, reviewing the actual technology platform known as RNA scope. So RNA scope works with a variety of cells and tissues shown here in the purple and yellow. Uh, the most common and clinically important uh, of these tissues being formal and fixed paraffin embedded, uh, also known as FFPE tissue. As with immunohistochemistry, the tissue is placed onto a glass slide where cells are permeabilized and target messenger RNA is unmasked. I note that the technique uh, of RNA scope uh, works for not only messenger RNA, but also other forms of RNA, such as long non-coding RNA. Uh, the application uh, <clears throat> of the tissue to dissection is followed by a hybridization step, uh, which includes uh, hybridization of a pool of about 20 target-specific so-called double Z probes, again shown here in the purple and yellow. Uh, these double Z probes target RNA uh, <clears throat> and then uh, allow for the amplification of hybridization signals via sequential hybridization of amplifiers and label probes, resulting in detection of single messenger RNA molecules in single cells as punctate dots in their morph morphologic context, as uh, shown here uh, with the purple and yellow punctate dots uh, within the individual cells. These dots uh, can be viewed under a standard light microscope. Uh, they can also be viewed under a fluorescent microscope if a fluorescent format of the assay uh, is employed. Uh, and they can also be uh, quantitated on a cell-by-cell -cell basis manually, uh, simply by counting the dots within cells, or with image analysis software, which I'll touch on a little bit later in the talk. Getting into more detail, uh, on the specifics of the assay and the platform, uh, 
Uh, the, the RNA scope uh, assay begins with a unique probe design for the detection of target RNA. Probes are Z-shaped Z oligonucleotides, uh, shown here, composed of an 18 to 25 uh, base pair sequence lower region, shown here, that's connected to a 14 base uh, tail sequence uh, to an upper region via a spacer. So the upper region uh, shown here is connected to the, to the uh, component of the double Z pair uh, that hybridizes to the target RNA by a spacer. When a pair of double Z probes hybridize next to each other at a target binding site as uh, shown here, which spans approximately 50 base pairs along the target uh, uh, molecule, messenger RNA molecule or, or RNA molecule. The upper regions of the two Z probes now next to each other form a pre-amplifier binding site of about 28 base pairs, shown here. This probe design strategy is similar to uh, fluorescence resonance energy transfer, also known as FRET. It's two independent Z probes have to hybridize uh, next to each other uh, along the target sequence uh, in order for signal amplification to occur. For each target RNA, a pool of about 20 double Z target probe pairs spanning about 1,000 base pairs along a target molecule are designed to specifically hybridize uh, to the target molecule, uh, but not to non-targeted uh, markers. Once the preamplifier binding site is formed, uh, as I discussed in the previous slide, signal amplification can take place, similar to branch DNA assays. An L-shaped preamplifier molecule is added, shown here, these blue Ls, which only binds if it sees a preamplifier binding site created by the tandem uh, hybridization of both members of a double Z pair. The amplifier molecules, which are added in the next step, bind to multiple binding sites along the preamplifier molecules. The amplifier molecules are these uh, smaller L-shaped, uh, lighter blue structures. Finally, labeled probes containing fluorescent molecules or chromogenic enzymes bind to the numerous binding sites on each amplifier. And these are shown in green uh, <clears throat> in this image. The result uh, of this amplification strategy is a, a Christmas tree of sorts with about 400-fold amplification per set of double Z probes. Since each probe set consists of a pool of about uh, 20 double Z pairs, again, each with 20 amplifier molecules, uh, which each bind 20 labels, uh, this means that for a <clears throat> roughly one kilobase target region, the amplification strategy employed by RNA scope can recruit up to about 8,000 labeled molecules. However, if a Z probe binds to a nonspecific target, it is unlikely for the adjacent Z probe to bind as well to form a preamplifier binding site uh, because of the lack of specificity of binding. Uh, <clears throat> as a result, uh, the double Z probe design provides a highly sensitive and specific method for RNA transcript detection uh, through signal amplification and suppression of background noise uh, as uh, <clears throat> the recruitment of amplification to nonspecific targets uh, with only single Z probes uh, <clears throat> is essentially uh, very minimal uh, within the context of the assay. It's been shown that binding of only three of the 20 uh, double Z probes that typically comprise uh, a complete probe set for a given uh, target RNA uh, is necessary for the detection of a single RNA molecule, uh, such that employment of a, a 20 double Z probe pool provides a level of robustness against partial target RNA accessibility or degradation. which would be encountered with uh, FFPE tissue. Uh, FFP or uh, formalin is known to induce some double strand breaks. Uh, and there's also uh, the possibility of protein remaining bound to target mRNA molecules uh, such that 
which redundancy allows for detection of RNA molecules uh, even if there are breaks and bound proteins. As a result of the RNA scope probe design and branch DNA amplification strategy, technique is approximately 100 times more sensitive relative to traditional RNA-ish methods, uh, which utilize typically uh, direct labeling of probes uh, through a label such as digoxygenin uh, combined with a secondary antibody approach. Uh, <clears throat> in this uh, figure uh, shown in this slide, you can see the difference between the chromogenic RNA-ish assay for detection of simian immunodeficiency virus uh, with RNA scope uh, versus traditional RNA-ish using deoxygen and labeled probes. While the details of the performance of the RNA scope assay are beyond the scope of this webinar and are covered in some of our other webinars <coughs> uh, that can be accessed uh, through the ACD website. RNA scope uh, <clears throat> briefly can be performed both manually with the help of a hybridization oven uh, called the hi -VZ, available through ACD, uh, or alternatively through uh, performance on an automated platform, uh, as shown in the central portion of this uh, figure. ACD has designed specific kits and optimized protocols uh, for these kits for both Ventana as well as Leica automated staining platforms shown here. Presently, automation is available on the Ventana Discovery platform, uh, as well as the Leica Bond RX research platforms, uh, as well as uh, Leica's clinical platform, uh, which is uh, identical in hardware, uh, but has uh, somewhat modified software. And their clinical platform is known as the Leica Bond 3. Overall, the automation on these platforms not only saves hands-on time for researchers and technologists, uh, but also provides for greater reproducibility in RNA scope assay performance from day-to-day -day and operator to operator. Uh, the automation really makes the assay uh, simple uh, and plug-and-play uh, for a variety of, of different uh, settings, whether it be research uh, or clinical. In the next section, we'll take a quick look at some RNA scope applications uh, before getting into uh, the details of RNA scope scoring. The use of RNA scope technology and assays has grown almost exponentially since the initial launch uh, in 2010, followed by the first few publications in 2011. As of this month, uh, the the technology has appeared in more than 1,000 peer-reviewed publications, uh, which span uh, top journals, including Nature, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, as well as some of the top uh, pathology journals, uh, such as American Journal of Surgical Pathology. The assay has also been used in a, a wide variety of fields, ranging from oncology, uh, <clears throat> including immuno-oncology, uh, to infectious diseases, to uh, neurobiology uh, and neurosciences, uh, as well as uh, development. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the, use, the, the assay has really proved useful uh, for almost every R&D uh, area of investigation. As I mentioned, RNA scope is, is frequently uh, used in oncology research, uh, including uh, more recently uh, heavy utilization in the area of immuno-oncology. Uh, the following slide shows an image of a non-small cell lung carcinoma that has been stained with an RNA scope of green and red duplex chromogenic assay. So you can see that both the green as well as the red dots. The green uh, chromogen uh, sometimes appears uh, somewhat blue in the final uh, appearance uh, under the microscope. Uh, in this case, the lung cancer cells uh, express PDL1, uh, which is shown uh, <clears throat> with the yellow arrows. You can see the, the, the green dots uh, present in the lung cancer tumor cells, as indicated with the yellow arrows. Scattered throughout the tumor, uh, 
uh, are also CD8 uh, positive cytotoxic T cells marked by uh, their red signals. So the red indicates uh, the presence of CD8, which is a membrane uh, receptor molecule on the T cells. And then occasionally uh, you can see cytotoxic T cells with PDL1 co expression uh, along with CD8, uh, indicated by the orange arrow. You can see in this case, uh, rather, I'm sorry, the, the green arrows. So you can see the blue and the red dots in the same cells. So this indicates co-expression in the context of cytotoxic lymphocytes. So that image was just uh, shown to highlight the utility of the RNA scope assay uh, in various amino oncology studies. Uh, RNA scope is also a powerful tool for detecting and localizing RNA uh, in cases where no antibody uh, is available uh, or is possible for the detection of a given biomarker, for example, in the case of a long non-coding RNAs, which obviously have no protein products. Some of these long non-coding RNAs have been shown to regulate gene expression and have roles in uh, tumor genesis as well as other diseases. Uh, in the study highlighted in this slide uh, out of the University of Michigan, the authors used RNA scope to study the expression of a long non-coding RNA called SHLAP1. Uh, they found that SHLAP1 expression increases with prostate cancer progression from low Gleason, low Gleason score, uh, shown here, going from benign and low Gleason score where you see very little SHLAP1 expression, uh, to high Gleason score, as well as uh, metastatic uh, <clears throat> A prostatic carcinoma where you see the beginnings of expression of SLAP1 and then high levels of expression. So this example just shows that RNA scope can serve as a very unique tool to study quantitative tissue expression and localization uh, <clears throat> for various RNAs including long non-coding RNAs uh, in patient-derived FFPE samples. Whereas the last uh, two examples, the amino oncology example and the long non-coding RNA example, uh, employed chromogenic RNA scope assays. Uh, this image is an example of a multiplex fluorescent assay, uh, but using only two channels rather than our current maximum capability of four. Uh, this sample uh, is peripheral blood from a breast cancer patient stained with pancytokeratin and CD45. Uh, the CD45 RNA molecules in the white blood cells appear as red. See the red dots here. Uh, while the cells with green signal are circulating tumor cells uh, with high expression of pancytokeratin. You see low power, you can see the single uh, CTC in this uh, pool of peripheral blood cells. And then at higher power, you can see the uh, high level of expression of, of pancytokeratin. So this CTC in the context of, of peripheral blood cells that are staining with CD45, uh, again, with DAPI showing uh, the nuclei of all of the nucleated cells in the assay. The detection of high-risk uh, human papillomavirus uh, or high-risk HPV is clinically important in various premalignant lesions and malignancies, including oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma, uh, <clears throat> where the presence of high-risk HPV confers a better prognosis uh, and, in some cases, uh, less aggressive treatment for the patient. In a recent study by Mills uh, <clears throat> and a group out of the University of Virginia published in the American Journal of Surgical Pathology, the authors performed and validated the performance of the RNA scope assay for high-risk HPV on the automated LICA Bond 3 platform, which I mentioned uh, in the context of a slide a couple back uh, <clears throat> with respect to the automation of the assay. Uh, this high-risk HPV assay detects <clears throat> E6 and E7 messenger RNA. Uh, as you know, E6 and E7 are the oncogenic molecules uh, that uh, bind to the RB as well as the P53 proteins in cells and disrupt the cell cycle. Uh, leading to tumor genesis uh, in these HPV-infected cells. 
uh, the HPV high-risk uh, RNA scope assay has been designed to detect 18 high-risk HPV subtypes uh, that are <coughs> present uh, or involved in these uh, head and neck oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas, uh, and they've been compared uh, in this study uh, out of the University of Virginia uh, against PCR, DNA, in situ hybridization, as well as P16 immunohistochemistry um, in a set of, of 102 uh, human samples uh, that comprise uh, a spectrum of cervical, vulvar, anal, and head and neck uh, cancers and dysplasias. The results out of this University of Virginia study showed that RNA-ish with RNA scope has a very high sensitivity and specificity for high-risk HPV, uh, not only in head and neck cancers, um, but also in cervical and anogenital dysplasias, and that the performance of the assay on the automated platform uh, is uh, similarly uh, very <coughs> robust and reproducible, uh, showing the same performance characteristics uh, that were evidenced in the manual assay, which has been published on quite extensively. So with that, we'll now turn to uh, an overview of RNA scope scoring. Uh, the, the chart shown in this slide compares immunohistochemistry with RNA scope, uh, which share many, many similarities in terms of modality, tissue type, compatibility, as well as performance on cell type. Uh, both utilize uh, chromogenic or fluorescent uh, formats. Uh, both can be performed on FFPE tissues as well as other types of tissue, including uh, frozen tissues, uh, cell blocks, uh, <clears throat> peripheral blood uh, preparations, uh, and others. Optimization is required depending on the, the type of tissue. Uh, uh, with most of the protocols uh, for the assay optimized most extensively for FFPE. Uh, the signal for uh, immunohistochemistry is typically diffuse, involving a, a staining of the protein in a given compartment of the cell uh, in a diffuse manner. Uh, this is in contrast to the RNA scope signal, which consists of dots and clusters uh, rather than a diffuse signal, uh, which I'll show in the following slides. Uh, for immunohistochemistry, the subcellular localization typically varies depending on the protein uh, <coughs> and can uh, be a presence uh, in the nucleus, cytoplasm, membrane, and other uh, areas of the cell. On the other hand, RNA scope uh, typically uh, shows these dots and clusters both in nuclear and cytoplasmic compartments, regardless uh, of the uh, target biomarker. The cell types that can be detected uh, by immunohistochemistry, uh, as well as RNA scope, are pretty much any cell type uh, in any tissue. Some of the common IHC staining patterns are shown in these images and listed here, uh, including nuclear, uh, cytoplasmic, membrane. Uh, HER2 stain shown here shows a, a great example of a membrane stain. Nuclear and cytoplasmic shown here in this P16 stain. Membrane and cytoplasmic uh, shown here. And then there's other uh, possibilities for, for IHC staining patterns or you can have partial membrane staining of the apical membrane, for example, or the basal membrane. You can have Golgi staining, you can have peripheral uh, nuclear staining. Uh, really, there's a, a wide variety of different IHC staining patterns. Uh, these images uh, sh <clears throat> show the contrast in staining pattern uh, between RNA scope and you know, his chemistry. Uh, with P16 versus uh, an HPV RNA scope assay. On the right, with immunohistochemistry uh, for P16, uh, you can see a diffuse nuclear and cytoplasmic stain where the protein uh, is highlighted in both the nucleus as well as the cytoplasmic compartments. <clears throat> While on the left, uh, in an HPV RNA scope assay, uh, you can see the characteristic uh, punctate dots and clusters uh, in both the nuclear as well as the cyto cytoplasmic compartments uh, of this uh, squamous cell carcinoma.
So a few questions that uh, you may have at this point include um, what, what does a dot mean? What's the significance of a dot? Uh, and what's the significance of the size of the dot? Um, another question might be what's the difference between a dot and a cluster? I've been throwing, throwing around some of these terms and I'd like to make, uh, <coughs> uh, make them clear uh, by providing some definitions in the next a couple of slides. And then finally, what's the sensitivity of RNA scope in type 2 hybridization uh, versus immunohistochemistry? So in this image uh, in which the RNA scope chromogenic assay has been performed with a red chromogen, uh, you can see the red chromogenic dots here, uh, the signal appears as numerous punctate red dots as well as clusters of various sizes and intensities. It's the number of dots and clusters that are important rather than the size of the dot or the intensity of the dot. Each punctate dot uh, is equivalent to a single messenger RNA molecule. The small faint uh, punctate dot uh, indicated by the yellow arrow is one messenger RNA molecule, as I mentioned, and then the slightly larger, darker red a nicely round punctate dot uh, indicated by the teal arrow is also one messenger RNA molecule. However, the larger size <coughs> of this dot is due to the uh, hybridization of the larger number of the double Z probes that I mentioned that are bound to the target molecule, which, which results in uh, a greater uh, amount of branch DNA amplification for that particular molecule. In contrast uh, to the single dots uh, that are uh, indicated, a cluster is indicated with this brown uh, arrow, and that indicates overlapping uh, single dots. And so as, you, as single dots begin to coalesce, uh, you can get these clusters, which indicate uh, higher levels of expression, as well as overlapping signals. Similar patterns of dots and clusters are seen in this uh, fluorescent version of the assay. Uh, the orange arrows point to single messenger RNA molecules with fewer double Z probe pairs bound to uh, target RNA compared with the dot uh, indicated uh, <clears throat> uh, also with the yellow arrow, uh, which points to a cluster with an irregular rather than a round shape uh, resulting from overlapping signals from multiple messenger RNA molecules. So again, you see the same patterns in both the fluorescent and chromogenic versions of the assays, where uh, the larger dots uh, <coughs> can be indicative of multiple messenger RNA molecules that are referred to as clusters. Uh, so just to reiterate, in general, uh, RNA expression for a given biomarker is related to the dot number rather than the dot intensity or size. Uh, again, in general, the dot intensity is related to the number of double Z probes bound to a target molecule. Uh, and as a result, cells with similar numbers of dots but with different dot intensities or sizes uh, have similar levels of RNA expression. Well, RNA scope is a, is a very powerful tool. There are occasions when I <clears throat> when those of us using the technology are faced with uh, various artifactual staining patterns um, that, that you may encounter and wonder about uh, how to deal with and how to, uh, to uh, work with that in the overall interpretation of the assay. As with immunohistochemistry, there may be edge artifact where uh, there may be more signal at the edges of the tissues in this uh, image, there's some minor edge artifact, uh, and the focus should really be placed on scoring uh, of the tissue and the cells away from the edge uh, rather than at the edge. And this is just a result of, of uh, <clears throat> chromogen trapping at the edges of the tissues, uh, preferential chromogen trapping, uh, whereas in the center you get the uh, true uh, signal uh, representative of of the expression uh, of those RNA molecules. 
An endogenous uh, biotin uh, background, uh, most common in the kidney and liver, uh, can also result in tissue with a pink haze, uh, almost reminiscent of, of eosin staining. Uh, many of you are familiar with H&E uh, staining, which includes uh, both hematoxylin and eosin. Uh, but you can see that uh, in this image, uh, it's distinct from the true signal of punctate dots uh, seen here in red. Uh, so while we don't uh, yet have an official protocol to reduce this biotin background, uh, again, which is quite common in kidney and liver, uh, the ACD uh, support group can certainly help you with your concerns or questions regarding this uh, pink haze. Uh, the last artifact I wanted to mention that you may encounter in your RNA scope uh, utilization is red chromogen trapping in adipose tissue. Uh, I don't have a great image for you, but this is uh, not a true signal that the red chromogen uh, will be very finely granular as opposed to, to the punctate uh, signal uh, seen with the uh, true RNA signal. Uh, getting to the sensitivity uh, and of the assay and the detection limit, uh, the RNA scope detection limit is typically below the detection limit for immunohistochemistry. Uh, in the example shown in this slide, comparing RNA scope and IHC detection of uh, the biomarker CMET, you can see that there is <clears throat> in the low expressing CMET cell line in the top row no detectable signal in the immunohistochemistry uh, uh, assay, while there are clearly RNA scope dots well above and beyond the negative uh, DAP-V control. So again, <clears throat> in this case where you have uh, completely absent staining in the negative control uh, and you see no uh, expression uh, by immunohistochemistry of, pro of MET protein, uh, you can see CMET a signal in the RNA scope assay. So this uh, demonstrates that the limit of detection for RNA scope uh, is below the level of protein expression uh, for MET. And this really highlights the ability of RNA scope to pick up low level of expression, not typically seen by IHC for a, for a number of different biomarkers, uh, including EMET uh, as well as many others. In comparison to uh, reverse transcription PCR, uh, RNA scope shows a similar sensitivity and limited detection as highlighted in this uh, figure. Uh, in experiments uh, <clears throat> looking at uh, expression of the HER2 uh, gene, uh, again, the HER2 gene in formally fixed paraffin embedded breast cancer tissues, the number of dots uh, per cell with RNA scope shown on the x-axis, highly correlated with transcript levels as assessed by RT-PCR. You can see a, a nearly linear relationship between uh, the two assays, again showing a similar sensitivity and limited detection. Uh, I'm, I'm now going to turn uh, my focus to manual RNA scope scoring, uh, which includes qualitative assessments, as well as semi-quantitative assessments and age scoring. Well, high RNA expression in cells can be seen at uh, 10x magnification, 4x magnification, or even very low power, such as 2x magnification. Uh, we typically re recommend evaluation of RNA scope assays at about a, a 20x magnification. Um, I should uh, uh, make it clear that I'm uh, referring to the uh, objectives on the microscope uh, and <clears throat> with the combination of the uh, ocular uh, magnification, uh, these uh, magnifications are actually uh, 10 times more than I'm indicating. So the, the 20X would actually be a 200 times magnification. Uh, and this would be for, for routine interpretation. Uh, for more detailed analyses uh, of expression that include potentially dot counting, uh, as well as assessment of low RNA expression, examination at a higher magnification by uh, using a 40X objective or, or 400 times magnification uh, <clears throat> is typically necessary. And those uh, 
context where, where that type of analysis and higher magnification are required uh, <clears throat> are typically uh, determined uh, by the individual researcher or pathologist uh, depending on the uh, desired type of data analysis uh, being performed. There are a number of ways to score RNA scope assays, ranging from uh, simple qualitative assessments to semi-quantitative scoring, uh, as well as H scoring and image analysis. Uh, for some assays, particularly uh, those assays looking at markers that are highly expressed when present, simple qualitative scoring can be appropriate. The panel in this slide shows clearly positive expression of albumin uh, by RNA scope on the right, with clearly negative uh, DAP-B expression on the left, uh, with DAP-B uh, being representative of a negative control, a nonspecific control, just to uh, provide a QC assessment of background stain. Uh, I'll just briefly mention that albumin uh, is a uh, protein uh, that is uh, present in the serum and is produced by the liver uh, and has also been uh, characterized as a uh, marker of hepatocellular tumors. So this is an example of a hepatocellular carcinoma with high levels of expression of albumin, uh, which helps to differentiate uh, this tumor uh, from tumors originating in other sites outside of them. Qualitative assessment is also appropriate for the interpretation of various infectious disease applications, uh, such as the example shown in this slide here uh, of cytomegalovirus-associated uh, chorioamnionitis. So this is an infection uh, of the placenta uh, where you can see chorionic villi involved by uh, large CMV-infected cells highlighted with a brown RNA scope chromogenic stain. Uh, I'll point out uh, again uh, in, in thinking about uh, the signals um, and comparing them to immunohistochemistry that in some cases very, very high levels of expression uh, <clears throat> as detected by RNA scope can result in a more diffuse signal, uh, which is really just the aggregation and coalescence of large numbers of dots. So you have so many dots that uh, are staining uh, next to each other that you begin to see essentially a sea of brown, which is more similar to an immunohistochemistry stain. Uh, so that would be for very, very high expressors, uh, <clears throat> exemplified by this example of CMV infection, again, in the context of uh, chorioamnionitis. Semi-quantitative scoring systems are quite common for immunohistochemistry assays. One of the more commonly used systems is shown here with a scoring range of 0 to 3 plus with the corresponding staining intensities ranging from negative uh, <clears throat> to strong. This system is uh, similar to what is used uh, by many clinical diagnostic labs for a number of IHC markers, including HER2, uh, as well as other uh, uh, biomarkers. Similar semi-quantitative scoring systems have been developed and are commonly used for RNA scope assessment. Uh, the scoring schema shown in this slide is what is routinely used um, internally uh, by ACD and within its pharma assay services group. Uh, and this scoring system spans a, a range of 0 to 4, corresponding uh, to the numbers of dots per cell. So, for example, a case with a score of zero essentially has uh, no staining or less than one dot per 10 cells, while a case with a score of one has approximately one to three dots per cell, a case with a score of two, four to nine dots per cell, and so forth, uh, all the way through uh, a score of four, shown in this panel here, where you have an average of greater than 15 dots per cell, and you begin to see uh, a significant number of clusters in this case, greater than 10% of the dots being localized uh, within these larger clusters. So I'd like to point out that this is just an example of a semi-quantitative scoring system uh, that has been developed uh, by ACV and is used by many of uh, <coughs> RNA, by many RNA scope users. 
uh, but other scoring systems are acceptable. So, for example, if uh, <clears throat> there was a, a need for a more compressed scoring system from zero to three, more similar to the typical IAC scoring system, there's, uh, that's absolutely possible. If there's uh, a need for something more granular where you have even more uh, individual uh, score uh, buckets uh, for scores, that's also possible as well. A representative example of a semi-quantitative score of zero uh, using this scoring system is shown uh, in this figure. It's clearly out of some dots. This panel shows a score of one with most uh, cells uh, showing uh, between one and three dots. This is an example of uh, tissue with a score of two with most cells containing four to nine dots. Very few of those dots being present in clusters. Uh, this image shows us uh, tissue with a score of with most cells containing about 10 to 15 dots, uh, with less than 10% of those dots within clusters. And then finally, on this example of a score four, most of the cells contain more than 15 red dots, uh, with more than 10% uh, of those dots uh, present in clusters. So those are just some uh, higher, higher power views of examples of various uh, scores uh, within that scoring schema that's typically used at ACD. Uh, and it can be used uh, in your own assessment of RNA scope assays. As it is for immunohistochemistry, H scoring uh, can be compatible with RNA scope. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with H scoring, it's basically a method of assessing the extent of staining of a tissue for a given biomarker that incorporates uh, both staining intensity as well as the percentage of cells uh, with given staining intensity. But for IHC, the H score is obtained uh, by the formula uh, highlighted here, <clears throat> where you take uh, factor three and multiply it by the percentage of strongly staining cells uh, with a score of three plus in that immunohistochemistry assay. Uh, and then you add that uh, to uh, factor of two times the percentage of moderately staining cells, and then add that to the factor of one times uh, the percentage of weakly staining cells. Uh, using this system, uh, a score in the range uh, between zero and 300 is obtained and allows for more granularity in terms of uh, biomarker expression uh, in a given tissue section or in a given tumor uh, relative to the typical semi-quantitative assessment using a scale from zero to three. So again, uh, the H score employs uh, percentage of cell staining as well as the intensity uh, to get that granularity. So for RNA scope, the staining categories uh, are determined <clears throat> rather than uh, by intensity of the IHC assay by the number the number of dots per cell. Uh, if additional uh, staining categories are desired, the maximum H score can increase accordingly. So if we use, uh, in the case of the ACD, a typical uh, scoring uh, system for RNA scope, uh, a, a, a system that employs five buckets rather than the typical four for IHC, then you have an H score that ranges from zero to 400 rather than zero to 300. And the score is computed very similarly where you look at uh, the percentage uh, of cells uh, that fall into each of these scoring categories and <clears throat> add up uh, the uh, sum of all of those scores uh, to obtain the final H score. The next section uh, I want to brief, in the next section I want to briefly touch on image analysis and quantitative scoring. I think most of you are familiar with whole slide scanned images um, taken from a mic or alternatively uh, images taken from a microscope camera uh, and the fact that these can all can both be analyzed by a number of commercial image analysis software packages 
or by free open source programs. Uh, with respect to the open source programs, the most widely known and used is uh, a software called ImageJ uh, with a newer version of, of ImageJ called ImageJ2. Uh, this uh, application is written in Java, so it can be used on uh, pretty much any uh, computer. Uh, another open source software is called Fiji, which stands for, <coughs> for Fiji is just ImageJ and describes, uh, the software platform describes itself as a batteries included distribution of ImageJ, which bundles a lot of plugins uh, facilitating uh, image analysis. Uh, here at ACD, we don't uh, typically use these open source um, softwares. We've played around with them, but we've uh, spent more time uh, using uh, uh, commercially available uh, platforms uh, most commonly within our uh, pharma assay services group. Uh, the first one that we've used uh, uh, is called Spot Studio, uh, which is a custom designed software algorithm. It's been developed by ACD in partnership uh, with Definians, uh, which enables quantitative analysis of chromogenic single color RNA scope assays, uh, again captured using whole slide scanning systems. Uh, the second um, um, image analysis application uh, that we use uh, and in fact uh, are using uh, more heavily at this point uh, is offered uh, by Indica Labs and is called HALO. Uh, this uh, software provides similar quantitative analysis, uh, but rather than just for single flex assays, also allows for precise quantitation of multicolored assays, including chromogenic duplex assays. An example of the SPOT Studio image analysis uh, for HER2 expression in, in breast carcinoma is demonstrated in this slide. Uh, the software identifies uh, cell boundaries uh, through approximation of average distances between the cell nuclei and the cell, uh, <clears throat> the cell nuclei and then the cell membrane. Um, the algorithm then counts dots within each cell and bins the dots by color uh, according to the number of dots per cell. Uh, the analysis shows uh, the percentage of cells that fall within each of the buckets, such that uh, an age score could actually be computed uh, if desired uh, for uh, further assessment of the expression level of, of the biomarker across this tissue. The HALO software can perform similar analyses to uh, the SPOT Studio uh, image analysis application that I just went over. Uh, but it can do it on uh, uh, duplex assays uh, rather than just singleplex assays. So in this uh, image, uh, you can see a more com complex duplex assay here with both red and brown chromogenic signals uh, in these cells. You can see the red dots here and the brown dots here. <laughs> and very similarly to how Spot Studio was able to basically bin each cell into a scoring bucket uh, based on the number of dots per cell. Uh, in HALO's quantitative H-score analysis, uh, each cell is also assigned to a bin uh, based on the numbers of dots per cell. The clusters themselves are divided by the typical probe signal area to calculate a dot number uh, for the cluster. Um, and then an H-score calculation performed to assign a single score to a selected area of interest based on the average target expression in this tissue. The final section of today's presentation uh, covers a quality control of RNA scope results. It's a very important aspect that really ensures the correct interpretation and the correct performance of the assay. So you know this is the, the final uh, Part of the talk uh, by no by no means is it the least important in, the, in many uh, respects. Uh, the foundation of, of all of the interpretation really relies on, on uh, the technique and using uh, proper controls uh, to ensure uh, that the uh, signal you're seeing in your, in your test probe assays uh, are truly meaningful. So for proper interpretation, as I mentioned, RNA-scope assays 
should always be performed with uh, both positive as well as negative controls. Uh, the positive controls are typically uh, housekeeping genes that are expressed at similar levels in most tissues. The common positive controls uh, utilized in RNA scope assays include uh, ubiquitin, also uh, known as UBC, uh, a uh, replication enzyme called uh, PAL2RA, uh, as well as another housekeeping gene known as PPIB. And their use is really analogous uh, to the use of genes like beta actin and GAPDH in uh, various other types of assays like RT-PCR and northern blot experiments. The purpose of the positive controls uh, is to uh, demonstrate the integrity of RNA, scope, RNA within the tissue for RNA scope testing. If the signal, uh, if a signal is present with the positive controls above uh, a given threshold, uh, that tissue is generally uh, considered suitable for RNA scope assays uh, with various target probes. However, if the signal is absent or below the, a given threshold for a given housekeeping gene, that tissue is typically not suitable for RNA scope analysis uh, with your test probe of choice. The negative control that uh, we typically employ, recommend for our, our customers uh, is a uh, bacterial gene uh, known as DAPB. Uh, this is a, a gene that has no homology to any sequences in the human genome uh, or to uh, any other species or to sequences in many other species that RNA scope uh, probes have been developed for, whether it be mouse or rat or dog. Um, this gene should be uh, very unique in sequence uh, and have no homology to these uh, species. The purpose of the negative control is to assess non-specific staining and non-specific signals in the tissue of interest. In general, if uh, the DAPB probe shows any, any signal uh, above a uh, background threshold, the tissue would not be suitable for RNA scope, whereas if the signal is absent, the tissue uh, is suitable for RNA scope analysis. So I won't get into uh, all of the details, but I'll, I'll provide a, a quick overview of, of the various uh, positive control probes. In general, depending on the target, uh, different positive control probes uh, would be recommended. The most flexible of these probes, uh, and it's probably the most common, commonly one used uh, within ACD and among its clients, uh, is the uh, PPID positive control. Um, it's used typically for, uh, it, its expression level is moderate, uh, about 10 to 30 uh, copies per cell, and it's our recommended uh, option uh, for most tissues where uh, you're not quite sure of the level of expression of your biomarker of interest uh, or you want to uh, <clears throat> use the most common probe that gives you the best chance of qualifying that tissue. Depending on the, um, the target, uh, different positive controls might be re recommended. So, for example, if you have a target that you know is present in quite low copy numbers, you might want to use a low copy housekeeping gene such as polar 2 a whereas if you have a high expressor where you know your, your target of interest should be expressed at high levels, uh, the UBC uh, gene uh, is a good positive control since it's typically expressed at high levels. And so the, the concept is that you want to match up the level of expression of your housekeeping positive control probe uh, with the anticipated level of expression of your target probe. Before running an RNA scope assay with target probes, uh, your technique uh, should generally be checked and the sample should be qualified with the appropriate positive and negative controls. In the first step, a slide prepared from cell lines uh, if these are available, uh, this, is, this is, again, just the optimal scenario, uh, <clears throat> if possible. Uh, these, the slides prepared from cell lines will be tested with the appropriate positive and negative controls, in this case, DAPB negative and PPIB for the positive. If the PPIB uh, <clears throat> stain slide 
shows a score of greater than or equal to 2, as shown in this lower panel, and the DAT-B stay and slide shows a score of less than 1, shown here where you don't see any signal. Uh, the technical check uh, would be considered to pass, and one could then proceed on uh, to the next step of the QC process. In this uh, next uh, step of the sample itself, so the tissue of interest uh, would, be, uh, would be subjected to the same positive and negative control probes, again, the DAP-B and the PPIB. In this uh, step of the QC uh, assessment, again, if the PPIB score is greater than or equal to 2 and the DAP-B score is less than 1, that tissue would then be considered uh, to be uh, suitable for assessment with a target probe. If any of the, the QC checks in step one or step two uh, do not pass, then uh, <clears throat> it would be recommended that the technique uh, that was used uh, be reviewed, uh, the troubleshooting uh, and optimization of the, of the assay uh, might take place. Uh, and that uh, uh, the tissues, um, other tissues be employed that may have more intact uh, RNA. Um, so additional samples may be tried. But if everything, that, if everything uh, checks out uh, with the QC process, uh, then the tissue could be considered, uh, can be considered to be suitable for uh, assessment with target probes. So the following example case provides a step-by-step -step review of the QC process that we just went over briefly. Uh, in step one, a technique check with cell line controls is performed and shows abundant uh, UBC uh, staining in the positive control and absent DAP-B staining in the negative control. The QC clearly passes, showing that the technique is working well on the cell lines. Uh, having confirmed proper technique for running the RNA scope assay, uh, on cell lines, uh, one can now proceed to checking the tissue sample of interest for RNA quality. Uh, the same control probes uh, can be used again by UBC for the positive and DAP-B for the negative. Uh, the sample in this case again passes with a score of 3 for UBC, a score of 0 for the DAP-B negative control, indicating that the RNA quality in this tissue sample is suitable for RNA scope testing. Having confirmed uh, the RNA quality uh, in this tissue sample uh, is suitable for RNA scope, uh, we can now test the tissue sample with various target probes, in this case, uh, various HPV target probes uh, in, a, in an example of a, a squamous cell carcinoma from the head and neck region. In these images, we are targeting several HPV subtypes, including HPV 16, 18, 31, and 33. Uh, which are all high-risk uh, subtypes, as well as HPV 6 and 11, which are low-risk subtypes and, and are not typically seen uh, in head and neck cancers. As you can see in this uh, set of images, tumor tissue is uh, strongly positive for HPV 16, seen with the brown uh, intense chromogenic dots, uh, but negative for the other subtypes tested. An optional step four can also be performed and is recommended if known positive and negative control cell lines or tissues are available, uh, similar uh, to a more, more typical IHC control strategy. In this case, uh, the Caskey cell line, which is known to be positive for HPV-16, and the HeLa cell line, which is known to be negative for HPV-16, are employed to demonstrate specificity of HPV-16 probe staining. <clears throat> so once the technique, the RNA scope technique is working reproducibly, reproducibly uh, in a given researcher or investigator's hands, um, labs can, can move on uh, and can generally uh, start to skip some of the technical, check, technical checks and run the tissue samples. Uh, along in parallel with the QC rather than uh, waiting for uh, qualification of the tissue with the positive and negative controls to be performed first and then follow that with the test probes. 
<clears throat> so in this RNA scope singleplex experiment with brown uh, chromogenic uh, with the brown chromogenic assay, the positive PPIB control uh, shown on the left shows moderate levels of expression, while the negative that B control is clean without signal. Again, indicating that the RNA quality is good and that the level of background signal is uh, minimal. <clears throat> Uh, allowing one to then move on to uh, be able to competently interpret the test probe, uh, which in this case is EBV. With the test probe shown here, uh, the sample shows high EBV expression with what looks like diffuse staining localized to the nucleus. Uh, the expression level for the virus, again, as I mentioned, for CMV uh, can often be very high such that the dots and clusters are nearly confluent. Uh, and give the appearance of a nuclear IHC staining pattern. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you uh, very much for your attention uh, and open the uh, uh, webinar up for questions uh, relating to uh, data interpretation scoring and other topics that I touched on. I know some of you have been submitting questions uh, during the course of the webinar and have, have gotten some answers. Uh, and I will continue to address additional questions uh, for the next five or 10 minutes or so. One of the questions uh, is what the appearance is of a negative HPV assay. In general, the negative, uh, a negative assay result uh, will look identical to the negative control, to the DAP-B uh, images that I showed uh, with the negative control probe. Uh, so essentially, you should have <coughs> a clean, background without any chromogenic dots uh, in if the protocol and the assay is working well. The shortest length of RNA that can be hybridized uh, is another question that has been submitted. In general, based on the design of the double Z probes, uh, which require at least 50 base, approximately 50 base pairs of homology. Uh, technically, uh, you need at least 50 base pairs uh, of sequence. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, most of our probes consist of about 20 of these so-called double Z pairs. Uh, and so our ideal target length would be about 1,000 base pairs. Um, as I also mentioned, uh, through various experiments, we know that uh, we can detect a single messenger RNA molecule uh, with about three sets of double Z probes, uh, <clears throat> in order, which, which allow us to visualize a, a single molecule. And so in answer to your question, uh, you would like to have uh, at least 150 base pairs of target sequence uh, in order to create a probe that uh, we think will work well and reproducibly for you. Uh, less than that, we have some other alternatives, um, including an assay uh, that we call base scope, uh, which is uh, more sensitive and is designed uh, for both low expressors as well as uh, shorter targets. So if you have questions on that, uh, please call our support line and we can uh, give you uh, some uh, guidance on, on how to best design your assay depending on the length of your target, including the potential use of, of base scope.
Regarding the biotin background problem uh, that you may encounter with liver and kidney, uh, there are a number of helpful hints and tips uh, that our support team can provide. Um, and so I would <clears throat> advise you to uh, follow up with our uh, support team by calling or emailing uh, the, indicated, the indicated addresses and numbers. <clears throat> 